Five minutes, complete spin down. That looks good, thanks. Today, when astronauts conduct spacewalks, they often perform maintenance work of some kind. In 2009, Atlantis astronauts successfully repaired the Hubble telescope. Dr. Joseph Kerwin and Pete Conrad were the first to conduct in-space repairs in 1973, fixing a jammed solar panel on the Skylab space station. And we had very little electrical power, and and the mission was going to be a failure unless we figured a way to pry that thing up and、uh, and get it going. That would not have been possible. Without his spacesuit, the、uh, designers of that suit had managed to design and build this little spacecraft, which had to provide protection from meteorites and vacuum. It had to circulate air,、uh, oxygen actually, remove carbon dioxide, keep us cool, provide communications, and enough mobility to let us do the job. Kerwin's suit was similar to that worn by the Apollo 17 astronauts. Who walked and even skipped on the lunar surface in 1972? I was strolling on the moon one day. Well, the first time you put it on, it takes a while, and you need help to get the zipper zipped. And when you're inside, it doesn't quite fit properly, and then they inflate it, and you can hardly move. But by the time you spend a thousand hours in that thing, and you've done it underwater, and you've done it in a vacuum chamber, and you've walked on a treadmill in it, you own that suit. Not in the literal sense. All suits that have returned from space, more than 200 of them, belong to the Smithsonian Institution. The Air and Space Museum does have all of the flown suits. Amanda Young, a retired curator, is the author of Space Suits, the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum collection. In the days when I worked here, it was about a third of the collection was on display both here and around the and museums around the world at any given time. But most of the suits are stored at a facility ten kilometers from Washington, behind this door, where humidity and temperature are carefully controlled. Dr. Kerwin's suit is here, so is that of Neil Armstrong, the first man to walk on the moon. There are suits from the earlier Mercury missions, and several suits that were experimental and never used. Stored on shelves, they are shrouded under protective covering. We've discovered that they are extremely fragile. They're very heavy. It's sort of a lifetime's work preserving them because, at the time, they were made because of the rush of the program. Requirements and thought it it wasn't really a consideration. There was no reason to consider what to do with them when they came back. It was up to Amanda Young to figure that out. Thanks to her efforts and those of her successors, spacesuits will be around for generations, an out of this world legacy that endures here on Earth. Susan Logue, VOA News, Washington.